your buddy back again and blessed again and because i'm blessed again i am back again this is part two of what happened with the deal what happened well as you see we had a um offer of ninety eight thousand dollars this deal did not go through what I want to do is I want to walk you through the process of what happened and I want to touch on some of the things that I learned. So if you ever come into this problem doing the real estate or you come into this problem with anything, I believe that you can still learn something from this experience, experience and apply it to any situation when the time period calls for it. Let's go back in time. This is from last year. Now, the deal you just seen isn't from last year, but I want to walk you through the process of what led up to that to show you that we have had multiple showings of the property. This is real life. Um, these things are happening. We are not just talking. Um, I'm the blue and my real estate agent is the other one, obviously. I'm showing the home at 1.30. You're more than welcome to be there with me. What do you know about the clients? I know some people act different around certain people for certain reasons. He's an out-of-state cash buyer. He is an investor, though, and is looking for something in Hot Springs. I'm on my way right now, though. I'll let you know how it goes. Thank you. I was already en route, so I'm here. Okay, perfect. Hoping you be there just in case he, he's got questions. See you soon. I think he may be here. A red car just pulled up. Yes, he said he is there. It happened and then the showing happened and then um, I stated any word from the client. I'm talking about the uh, bar stools that I finally found to be able to stay stay at the property. Good evening. The client had texted me this morning, this afternoon. He said he was going to pass on the property. She's talking about the bar stools. Um, I said, cool, sounds good. His loss is just like courting a person for marriage. All those who pass on the person whose value is immeasurable miss the blessings that come for generations. The person that's getting his house is not only getting the house, they're getting the extra blessings that come with this house because I put my spirit into this house. It wasn't just something that I threw together to get a check. Things were thought up. There's care into this home because that's what it is. Then she's pretty much responding back to me. Now we're going into January 2nd. The realtor that showed her client this today said, um, the buyer I'm working with loves 126 Gibson, but he's doing an FHA. My concern with the FHA are the roof and the back porch or a cliff. As y'all saw from the other videos and you will see in the future videos because we are getting that fixed. And the rotten stairs that will probably come up in the F in, F in a FHA appraisal. Will the seller accept an FHA offer? We can negotiate the roof and back porch in the deal. Yes, I will accept an FHA offer. Now this time I was not familiar with FHA like I am now. I'm thinking, well since I know I was thinking more of a, on the lines of a conventional loan. A conventional loan, you can negotiate those things and have it come out the money that you that you're getting. Let's say the back debt costs um, three thousand or four thousand dollars. You can negotiate the price and say, okay, take four thousand dollars off of the property, and that will save you some money to be able to to get it done. Um, or there are other ways you can negotiate it. So this is what I was thinking at the time until I did a little bit more research into FHA and found out that it doesn't really work that way. <laughs> as far as with what I've dealt with, maybe somebody else knows something different. Again, this is my first time flipping a property and this is also my first time dealing with FHA. I'm new to real estate, but I'm not new to business. And then I said, let's wait and see what the FHA appraisal report comes back first before we negotiate with the roof and back porch though, between you and me. Okay, sounds good. She said she let us know if her client decides to submit the offer because he doesn't want to waste your time and not go through because of the issues. I'll let you know if he 
if they do send us the offer. Thank you. I would relay that it wouldn't be a waste of time considering that comps for similar homes are coming in higher than $100,000, putting them in a position of positive equity in this crazy market. I priced the house at a competitive price because I got a business mindset. I'm not in the business of sitting on properties. I'm not in the business of sitting on product. If I got, if it's books, if it's clothing or whatever it is I'm selling, I'm in the business of moving it, not sitting on it. I don't want to sit on this property for a long time. I wanted to move so I can get my money and move on to the, to the next one. This is what we do. We build affordable houses. There are going to be other houses where you'll be able to make more money off of. And there are going to be houses you can be like, hey, let's go ahead and move this. And remember, again, this is my first property that I'm flipping as a affordable house. My price point has to be affordable or that kind of like defeats the purpose of what we stand for. This is um, um, the benefit of being in these type of positions because you can dictate, you can dictate. If I want to put the house at $150,000, then I could sit on it for a while and, and do that. Or I could sell it for what I'm selling for because I know it's a good deal. I'm still making a nice profit on behalf of RLD Inc. Move on to the next one because I have a whole vision and plan and so on and so on and so on and so on. Um, she sent me a screenshot and this is a conversation between her and the realtor that was representing the seller hey lauren just wanted to follow up with you and see if your client had decided on his potential offer we are waiting for a letter of pre-approval from his lender he is still interested but has zero wiggle room for repairs so i'm making sure that it'll work out okay sounds good thank you for the follow-up now just to let you know the house is already under contract we, we currently have the house on the contract and we are looking at closing on the house very soon. There are some repairs that have to be done to the property. But they're getting such a good deal that the money they do, they did have for another property, they're able to put it into this property. So they don't mind some of the repairs that they have to do. Like they have to come in and put a new roof on. Um... They don't mind spending the money for that because they're getting such an excellent deal in comparison to other properties that they were interested in. They're like, hey, this is a better deal. It's a better property. And once we put a new roof on, guess what? The value goes up even higher. They may say, why would you be selling a house that needs a new roof? The house doesn't need a new roof. FHA, which is backed by the government, they approved it. They came out and they did their inspection and everything. It's, it has enough life on the roof where it's not like the roof is going to cave in or it's raggedy or anything like that. But some people may want a new roof. They may put a new roof on here to add instantaneous value and equity to the property. On a property that they're already entering into, most likely with positive equity because everybody pretty much has said, including with my own research, that the property is going to appraise for more than what we're selling it for. And this serves as a basis to see if we can do it for future properties and this is what she told me this is attached to that picture I follow up with her they are waiting the pre-approval letter and then they will they'll be sending the offer they're asking if the living room furniture uh, is rented and I made my little like face uh, emoji if they want any of the furniture it can be negotiated if not then we will remove it upon sale of the house the living room furniture being rented or, or not is irrelevant to them buying the property. It's not affecting the sale of the property. It's really none of their none of their business. As far as I, you know, y'all know, yes, we did rent it, and I got a video explaining that and explaining why I did it to help sell the property. We've been able to move this property pretty fast in the as we as I would say in the heat of summer. I mean, not summer, but. <laughs> In the heat of winter, in the heat of winter, because it, it was summertime that the price would go up um, and it would move even faster. But like I said, I knew we were coming into the winter. I was trying to get the house done before winter hit. It didn't happen. And so I 
implemented negotiation tactics to be able to still move this property uh, fastly at a competitive price that's fair for the buyer and also fair for myself who is the CEO president how you want to put it of RLD Inc excuse me <clears throat> she said perfect I will let her know thank you then she says I just sent you the document now that's what you seen the document was sent but here's the process they send the document we look it over we send it back if there are any changes that we would like and then you go through the whole process um, after that you have um, your inspection then after that you have your appraisal then after your appraisal you have your termite inspection and stuff like that and then pretty much it's closing now I told you the property is already under contract and I'm kind of like giving y'all some some future uh, insight because this video where I'm doing is new but the information is old but I'm presenting it like because it already happened I just didn't record it when it did happen and now we have the uh, the property under contract um, and we're going through the whole process I can speak on it but I can't drop the videos I want to drop without first dropping this video catch you up if that makes sense to you but um that's pretty much the process where are we at right now we are in the process of fixing some of the things that need to be fixed which when they come do the inspection they give an inspection report and I'm gonna show y'all that show y'all that in this uh in this thread and the only thing they wanted to be fixed was the back deck because the stairs are rotting and everything and there needs to be some rails and it really wasn't the stairs it was the the rails but I'm not I don't do business like that I'm gonna do the rails and we're gonna do a brand new wood step why because RLD's name is on this I'm the president and my name is attached to this so I have to represent RLD Inc 100% also for them showing that we're willing to go above and beyond the price is, is is competitive in regards to what we're paying to get it done and we want it to be done right we don't want them to come out and say okay y'all put rails but then the steps are rotting that's going to bring the value of the property i'm going to say bring it down well yeah it's going to bring it down in comparison to if we just got the whole thing redone i want to know what this property is going to appraise at at the right appraisal not yeah you know it could have been better blase blase because i have a idea what i think is going to appraise that and this going to set the standard and it's going to give me some some data some information some insight into future properties that's why we're making sure we're doing the whole thing then i said okay looking over it now for my research fha is mostly looking for the house to be livable and the roof to have at least two years of life left on it I just called one of my lenders and asked him three questions the buyer had concerns about it not going through with FHA. He said the AC unit is fine with FHA as long as there's no rotting wood around the window that's in and as long as it, is, it has heat and air. The unit we have, it is a heat and air unit. I specific, even before I knew all this, I said this is a unit I want to go with. We live in a, in a, in a, um, in a state, it gets all four seasons. When I remodeled this house, when we went in and remodeled this house, we had the mindset of redoing it as if I was going to put my own family there. We came in it with the mindset of it being royal because I, I saw that most of these type of houses that people get, they just throw them together. It doesn't have no, no soul, no personality, no, no spirit to the house. And I'm out to prove and I'm proving that you can take these houses that are in in the hood because this would technically be what we call the hood or you know at a hundred 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 thousand dollar hundred fifty thousand dollar price point you know uh lower income and showing that you can come in and you can build these houses up right and still make a profit 
This is one of the reasons why I had a nickname, the Black Unicorn. Because I'm not supposed to exist. Pun intended, because I am black. But the unit we have, again, is heat and air. There's no rotting wood around it, so that's not an issue. Number two, as you see, the roof, the appraiser is not going to say anything about the roof unless there's something visible. Like I told you, I had already went back and researched the roof, and I told her, hey, I think the roof is good to go because there's enough life left on it. That's why I said what I was saying right here. And she's talking to one of her lenders. Something crazy is going to happen with this, but pretty much the deal is going to fall through, which you could say is, it was good for me in the long run because the people that are getting the house now, they don't have an issue with fixing up some of the small things that need to be fixed up. Number three, the only red flag he's seeing would be the rotting deck in the back. He said that that would not pass FHA standards, so we would have to get that fixed as soon as we get on the contract to keep from holding up the appraisal and closing date, which is what we are in the process of doing. Those videos will be coming after this one. And I stated, where are the options with the back deck? I'm not trying to put my money into it, especially at the price we listed it at. Now, again, this is before I knew what I know now. The only way to get out of fixing the deck is to not is not to go with the offer. And we have to wait on a cash buy or conventional loan offer. I did a little bit more research, as I told you earlier, and I found these things out for myself so I could understand the process. Too many people don't understand the process. So when people are talking about these different things and they're telling you different things, they're like, uh, that's why I was able to communicate with her like, hey, for my research, FHA would approve this. So what's, what's the issue? What's the issue? The thing I came across was FHA, you get an FHA loan for a fixer of house. Well, what are the, my, then the next question was, well, what are the guidelines or what are these stipulations or standards for FHA to say, hey, this qualifies as a fixer up house? Since my house needs certain things, door hung, a little paint here, a little paint there, you can make the argument that the roof needs to be replaced or it's going to be need to be replaced soon, that that will be considered a fixer up house. If my house will fall under, under a fixer up house, according to those standards of FHA, then why, why can it not be approved as is? That's what I was thinking. I wasn't trying to put any more money into it, but I also didn't want to lose a deal for a back deck. Then she goes on, she says, FHA standards are very strict with rotting wood or holes. If they see it as a safety hazard, they won't give a loan and we wouldn't be able to close until it's fixed. Okay, gotcha. I make some calls. Did you know if the buyer qualifies or would qualify for an FHA 203K loan by any chance? Like I said, I do my own research. Maybe I'm telling her stuff that she don't know. What an FHA 203K loan is, if there are repairs that need to be done to the house, they'll put that money in the loan and then the repairs will come out of the loan and then FHA will send out people to make sure that the work is done. That's why I was like, hey, if it needs this, then why we just can't put it in the, in the loan? You know, why, 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 all you can't do like that if they really want the house. Because the house is still priced at such a good point that's not like that if they put it in the loan and then they move into it like oh my god we're so underwater with this house and the crazy thing is most people that move into houses they are already underwater they don't they don't get the equity or have equity in the house until years later even if they did uh qualify or have this fha 203k loan packaged with their regular fha loan they would still have positive equity most likely coming into this house and by fixing it guess what the house house's value has already increased that much more then she said okay thank you and i'm not sure let me ask the agent the deal fell through and then she sends me this uh as you see darren this is somebody to uh, call to get the back deck fixed this is after we have some more showings and and stuff like that now what i believe what happened with this deal is you have some people on the back end who are trying to make more money off of it 
with their relationship with the mortgage brokers. If you don't know how it works, mortgage brokers, they get points off of the mortgages. So when the person pays their mortgage, then they get a kickback off of it pretty much. And this is just, just my personal opinion, my personal judgment. Cause if you have to go look up what opinion means, it means judgment based on what you, your understanding and what you know and everything. For those who don't know that, oh, everybody has an opinion, or everybody has a judgment, but ultimately you have to come to a ultimate judgment, rather that judgment is right or wrong. So when people tell you, oh, don't judge, they're lying, because oh, a, a opinion is a judgment. But um, I believe that instead of going through that whole process, they just probably found another house that was more money, to make more money off of this individual. And the reason I say that is they were stating, excuse me, they were stating that their lender, FHA lender, you got different brokers, but it's still FHA. So we're going to say their broker, their broker that was doing the FHA loan for them, they, that it wouldn't be approved by FHA. When we know that's not true because my real estate agent already told me that she, I just called one, one of my lenders and asked him three questions the buyer had concerns about it not going through with FHA. And they were saying, hey, it's not going to go through because of the AC unit, even though it's heat and air. Now, that's a contradiction. You got one lender saying it'll go through. You got another lender, lender saying it won't go through. You see what I'm saying? Does it make any sense? Which which one is it? And then what we end up doing was we said, okay, we can still get the deal done. Just go through this lender right here, which is her lender. No response. Um, we scroll back down, and she said the agent said as long. As that deck is repaired, the lender will be fine and the appraiser should be fine with everything else. I told her that we would be sending her a counter offer as soon as I write it up. I will send it to you for a signature. The counter offer was this. Well, let me back up. They wanted me, they wanted to get the house for $98,000. They wanted me to pay closing costs and they didn't want to put a EMD, earnest money demand, earnest money deposit or any type of deposit on the property. Why is this bad for me? Because if I sign that contract, the property is locked up. If you ever go on Zillow or any of these websites and you see where it says under contract, that's what it means. That contract you've seen for $98,000, that means that both parties have signed the contract and you're, they're going through the process of closing on the property. And then their closing, um, their closing period was 45 days. That means when we sign that contract, Nobody else can come view that property. Nobody else can come in that property. Obviously, I can come in there, blase, blase. But you can't come in and say, hey, I want to buy this property because it's under contract. They have first right to buy that property because I signed the contract. And also my wife because our names are, are on it or whatnot. Um, so that's what, that's what happened. That's what happened. We sent a counter offer. We stayed at $98,000. We wanted 30 day closing and we told them that we would still pay their closing costs, but they need to make at least a thousand dollar deposit showing that they are serious about this house. They are invested in it. Now this is a non-refundable deposit because if a person really wants a house in, they're willing to pay, pay that money. Like I really want this house and that's what ended up happening. But guess what? that thousand dollar deposit because there needs to be work done in the house it goes toward fixing what needs to be done and then that thousand dollars that's deposited that goes toward in this case fixing some of the things they want fixed which is the back deck it comes off of the end price so instead of 98 using that for example it would be 97 the people that are buying the property, they came in at the asking price of $100,000, so you take $1,000 off of that. And then you got your closing costs because I'm paying 
the closing costs are three percent three percent so six percent coming off of that you can do the math and you know and then you know the money that i have to divvy up with my investors then um i said okay sounds good just sent you the contract i sent both yours and your wife's section to sign to just your email to make it easier as i told you it's both of it's the property is in my wife's name. She is the vice president of RLD Inc. But we're married, so both of us have to sign on the contract. Now, the land that we own, the land that we own, it's in RLD Inc.'s name. The house, everything's going to be in RLD Inc.'s name. This situation was a little bit different because of how we acquired the, uh, the property. That's the situation a little bit different, which is why it ends up being mostly in my wife's name, who is the vice president. Um, then as you see, I said, okay. Then I asked a question. They agreed to adjust the terms. After we all sign it, after we all sign it, it goes to, to them and they, they decide whether they want to move forward with the adjusted terms. I said, sign, good morning, any word on if they accept the terms. Or have a problem with them good morning still waiting to hear back if they haven't responded by noon i will give her a call this is the email or excuse me the text message that my real estate agent sent me that she was having the con that the conversation she was having with the real estate agent that was representing the buyer at that time the last part, I mean, the part at the end is what you really want to focus on. Hey, girl, Linda finally got all the heating air guidelines figured out. They require a permanent heat source and won't let the window unit count, even though it is affixed to the literal property. So we can't move forward to a little sad face or whatever. Of course, you know, sad face because she wants a deal to go through so she can get her money. Then I said, hello, I'm assuming the buyer wasn't serious after offering your lenders because Remember I told you that. I said, hey, offer your lenders because your lenders said that they can they can do it. They can make it happen. Good afternoon. She never responded to me after I gave her a couple of lenders that would approve her client. That's why I said there was something else going on behind the scenes. And as we all know, if you want to really know what's going on behind the scenes, follow the money. That would include the principal broker of that real estate agency and the mortgage broker who is doing the doing the paperwork for the loan it's not too hard to figure out y'all but that's what happened she never responded to her because i said I, what happens i talked to my real estate agent i said hey this is what we're gonna do we're gonna put the ball in their court and see what they're gonna do tell them that we have lenders that will get the deal done no issues they will approve it with this uh not central but he an AC unit, that's a window unit, but that does both. And as you see, she never responded to me. That's just not good business either way. What I'm thinking in regards to that is her principal broker, her uh, broker, the agent that's over um, her, not my real estate agent, but the one that was representing the buyer, told her to, hey, just leave it alone, don't even respond to her. And obviously she did what she was told but i would have you know at least followed up and said you know we're not going to go through with it either way we find out the property anything she ended up hurting herself because my real estate agent is not going to deal with not one not going to want to deal with her on future deals yeah i'm not going to want to deal with her i'm not even going to want to deal with that real estate agency uh so much i'm not saying that i won't deal with them but i would be like they're going to pay full price they ain't getting no discount boom, boom boom i'm not willing to to work with them because of that situation i'm gonna more so give the deal to the i'm i'm more, more so will get a deal or have my real estate agent give the deal to the real estate agent that's representing the person that's buying the house now like hey run it to run it through her and see if she got any people that are interested in this I mean, that's just the way it goes. I said, okay, cool, cool. And then that message was sent, was that January 11th 
as you see, we are in, in winter. December, January, February. Then Saturday 15th, some time passed. You see the house is showing. The house is showing. People are thinking it's too good to be true. Like, I got to check this house out. It's not too good to be true. It's not too good to be true because the inspections are going to tell it. Good morning. There is a showing schedule for Monday at noon. Good morning. Thanks. Was the house showed today? The lady that said she was going to see it this morning never showed up. So there was a scheduling show. I mean, there was a showing schedule, but the lady didn't show up. Showing on Friday is that time. Okay. Um, yes, that's fine. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. And then good afternoon. Someone is about to show the home if that is okay. Now this is all these showings that happen as you see. This is one uh, showing that was scheduled. That's the 19th. Uh, you can't see the images because they're old, but you get the point. And then another showing. I said, yes, that's fine. Then boom. I think the we had showings Thursday, fr Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I think the one from Saturday is the person that ended up falling in love with and saying, I want it. Because we go right here to Sunday, January 23rd. We have, we have an offer coming in this afternoon from the lady that just showed the home. I will send it to you as soon as I receive it. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Also, here's just a little information about the buyer. And I have sent you over the offer to your email. So we got another offer on it, another official offer now let me give you a little bit of detail on that i know you can't see it, it says tap the download but just bear with me this is a say a perfect storm they have no problem with the little do-it-yourself stuff um they love the price obviously and they were or are i should say buying it for mostly mostly their daughter the daughter stays in another state and she's moving from there down here. The mother and husband, they stay here in Arkansas. And this is a perfect home for her. Perfect storm for me because that was the type of person that I was looking for to get the property. The person that came in and said, this is a good deal. They understand real estate. They understand the market and stuff like that. And not, hey, the door isn't hung up and, you know, we're not going to, we don't want to buy because of this and because of that or whatever. Not uh, not really understanding like what you are getting. You're getting awesome value. You're getting a house where if you put a little work into it and finish it up, hang a door, put a knob on there, you know, get the roof replaced, which a roof to get replaced isn't really expensive. Um, you know, obviously it's more expensive now than it was before, but it's still going to add instant value to the property. But just to give you some insight into that. And then I said, since they are doing FHA, are the previous problems we had with the other person null and void with this person's broker? I didn't want to run to the issue of doing the FHA and getting it under contract. And then they want to prove it because it has a window unit that's air and heat. I didn't want to go through the same situation I went through before. So that's why I was kind of like asking her. And then she tells me. This client is going with a different lender. I'm not sure if it will be an issue with the lender until we get further along in the process. Um, also, let me add this. The person that's buying the house, they were approved for 144, I'm going to say $145,000. The house that they were looking at, that they were approved for, was $150,000. If you were approved for this house, that's one hundred fifty. dollars but you only were approved for 145, that means that you have to come up with the difference. We're going to say $5,000, give or take. That let me know that they have at least $5,000 to work with. So if you're getting a house that's $100,000 and you're choosing this house that looks better, that's put together better than a $150,000 house, that means in your mind, you're thinking, oh, I can come in, I can put 5000 in, and I'm still spending less money than if I bought this house for $150,000 that is not as in a nice condition as this house is $100,000. And I know this for a fact because 
my real estate agent told me because the real estate agent that's representing the buyer told my real estate agent who told me this and they were like you know oh my god I, we you know so we thought it was too good to be true and everything this is this is perfect and they were asking why am i selling the house so cheap when i know that i can get it for more money i mean i can sell it for more money because they came across houses that were more money but they did not look as nice as our property and she explained to them that this is what we do we provide affordable houses i don't care what the world is doing i'm gonna do what i do i'm gonna do what i do it's as simple as that that's why i keep on telling y'all that's the benefit of being in in positions like this you don't have to do what the world is doing you don't have to be super greedy you don't have to be greedy at all I'm not being greedy. If I was being greedy, then I wouldn't say, okay, I'm going to list the house for $150,000. And then they come in and they drop it down to, you know what I'm saying, we take $20,000 off and we sell it for one thirty. Or I fix, I finish fixing the stuff up and then I list it for one hundred and sixty dollars or whatever. Like I told you, I'm in the business of moving properties and, and helping people out, but also representing who I represent to the fullest. But um, it goes on. I said, gotcha sound like a deal considering their situation of wanting their daughter closer. I'm looking over the documents now. Perfect. Sounds good. It's a very good offer, I believe. They are wanting to keep the washer, dry, washer dryer and, of course, the kitchen appliances, which come with it. You see everything we got in there is new. The washer and dryer, they're not new. They uh, came out of another um, rental property, but they're, they're good to go. We know that for a fact because we tested it and... We use it now just to make sure that it's still good to go. But uh, I had a question about about the deposit. I had a question about the deposit. As you see, um, it said buyer will pay to seller the deposit in the amount of one thousand dollars. But it then above it, it says, um, well you can't see it, but it says right there, earnest money, which is what I'm talking about. But you can't see the above part. And what it says is, if it's a FHA, then you can't do that. And so it kind of threw me off a little. When are they gonna get a thousand dollars? Cause like I told you, this is my first time going through this. I didn't want to. I did not want to lock my property up, and then they weren't serious about it. Which is why I said, "Can you explain this to me a little better? How long before the inspection? Considering the property will be off the market." Also, part two of your email and the other email with the pre-approval letter have no attachment to it. She sent me the pre-approval letter showing what they are what they were pre-approved for so it wasn't a matter of hey we have to get them pre-approved or see they're pre-approved they were already pre-approved then she tells me that means that the buyer will agree to pay you a one thousand dollar deposit pretty much mean that they are very serious about buying this property they do the same thing with uh with cars you go buy a car they want to know how much you got down but it's, it's a little bit different than it is with real estate, but the concept is pretty much the same. What we call skin in the game. Even when you go through hard money lenders, let's say you want you find a property, you get under contract, and you want to renovate this property. When you go get a hard money from these uh, people that are going to loan you this money, they still want you to put money in on the deal. They still want you to have skin in the game. Then it goes. She goes on and says, but. They will give you that thousand dollars after they have had an inspection. They have 10, bi 10 business days to do that. But depending on the inspection, we just never know what repairs the buyer may ask for. But in her email, she did mention the buyer does not have any issues repairing little things that are left. So they may not ask for any repairs. So after that inspection is when they will give you that deposit. They pay for the inspection and then the inspector is going to tell it. That's what I'm telling y'all like. You know, I'm not trying to get over nobody. The inspection is going to tell it. You can't get around the inspection. It's not like I'm choosing the person to inspect the property and the person I'm choosing to inspect the property, I'm paying them money to pass the inspection. No, they do all that. And the inspection report comes back and then the buyer decides if they are satisfied with the inspection report. And they choose, okay, we want to get this done. We want to get that done. It could be a light bulb. It could be a, a light fixture, which we don't have to worry about all that because all the light fixtures and the electrical and the plumbing is brand new in the house. 
all that stuff is, is, is brand new. Just want, I just want y'all to understand that. You may, you may say, how are you able to sell this property for th um, uh, $9,000? That would be crazy, obviously. But $100,000. Because we were able to get the property at such a good deal that even with us redoing this property in the midst of, of lumber prices going up, we're still in our, we're still in the green zone. We're still in the green zone of profit and ROI. But um, that thousand dollars end up going toward fixing the back deck. We deposited a check already. It's in the bank. We just waiting for it to clear. It's been, uh, we got that snow and everything, that snow and that ice. And we haven't been able to do anything really. And that's what we are waiting on, just kind of like taking y'all into the future of where we at now. Then she said, let me see if I can just screenshot it and send it to you on here. It was just their pre-approval letter and conveyance letter. I said, okay. And that's it for the reasons not showing up. I said, contract looks good. Let's sign it. Awesome. I sent it over for signatures. Just sent it to both of you and your wife. Thank you. I had no issues with the contract. They had the thousand dollar earnest money deposit, which let me know they knew what they were doing. They had went through this process before. Excuse me. And their closing time was 30 days. They wanted to close this property as fast as possible, just like us. And they had on there that we pay for closing costs. I could have came back and said, hey, no, I want you to pay for it. But I said that I would pay for closing costs. Now, a person may say, well, you know, you don't, don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's situation is different. I'm going to do what we do over here. We're going to be successful either way. If you don't want to negotiate that and you say you pay your own closing costs, then that's you. You ain't over here in our bank account. You ain't over here uh, in, our, in our vision, in our plan, in our development, and what we have going on. If we want to pay closing costs, and we feel out like that we can eat that cost and we can make it up later, then that's what we're going to do. We're not like everybody else. We are royalty regardless if we were doing this or not. We just happen to be doing real estate. I know people, some people say, oh, don't, don't negotiate that or, you know what I'm saying, make them pay their own closing costs. Like, like I told you, I'm in the business of moving houses and we're still going to make a, a, we're going to say a pretty penny off of this property at a hundred thousand dollars um then we go on and she said you see we are in what january 24th what title company do you want to use the buyers are using the excuse me the buyers are closing with advantage title and they do a wonderful job would you like to close with the same have you used them before yes i've had nothing but great experience with them okay we can use them also perfect I'll have her get started with the file. Thank you. Then we are uh, two days later. I think it is. Yeah. Good afternoon. Agent and her client and home inspector will be there today at one o'clock. Now it's getting serious, y'all. We won't be there, but just wanted to give you a heads up that they'll be in the home. Thank you. Meaning, hey, don't be there. I told, kind of told her, let me know when somebody's coming because I don't want to be there when people are showing up. Okay, sounds good. Let the agent and client know that if they have any questions or concerns that come up to text or call you and I'll respond immediately to you. Okay, most definitely I will let them know. Thank you. You're welcome. Good afternoon. Any updates on the inspection report? I know you mentioned it being sent yesterday after we spoke. Some time passed and she told me that, hey, it's going to be coming in. But I'm like, hey, you know, what, what's going on? I'm trying to figure out, like, was there anything that they wanted what what did the inspector say like i told you, you know it's it's real and this is my first time uh doing this especially with a uh rehab property it's not like this is a brand new new construction property this is a rehab property and i tried to do everything according to the to the book electrical and all that i said hey i want i want the code and i shouldn't say i tried to i did electrical to code all permits pu uh, pulled Plumbing, all permits uh, pulled. Inspectors came out and signed off on it. Um, even with the back deck, we got the 
the permit, the original permit we got to renovate the property, um, that's on file, but we got it updated because we thought we were going to pay some extra money to have the back deck redone and have the inspector come out. But we went down there and they just updated the, the permit. They said, you're good to go. When it gets done, call the inspector out and they will inspect it. You don't have to pay any extra money. But um, the new buyer, as you see, her, her, yeah, her, her agent or their agent is sending messages to my agent. Good afternoon. Just wondering if you had sent the IRSA just checking on my emails. Yes, just waiting on signatures. Yesterday was crazy busy. I just got it done this afternoon. Sounds good. Thank you so much. All right. We should have it by today. Cool, cool. And then, boom, we get the inspection, repair, and survey. Don't know if you can see this. But uh, you see it says buyer inspection. You can pause it and read it. And then it tells you what needs to be done. Please add railing around upper portion of back porch for safety. That's all they wanted. But like I told you, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get the whole thing redone. And I told you why I'm going to get the whole thing redone. I don't want the appraiser to come out. And then be like, okay, y'all got new railing, but the, the steps are are, um, are are rotted. Let's go ahead and get it done the right way. And let's, let's make the house look the way it's supposed to look. You got this nice, uh, you know, modern yet classy house on the inside that's going to uh, age like fine wine. We didn't do anything crazy. It's going to age like fine wine. Then you got this back deck with new rails and raggedy steps. Let's not do that. Let's do it the right way. This is what I told myself. This is what I told my wife. This is what I told my, my investors. Let's go ahead and do it the right way. This is what we're going to do. Our name is attached to this. My investors, their name is attached to this property also because their money is invested in this. They're trusting in me to do the right thing. And I'm going to do, to do that. This is why I'm, I'm documenting all that. I'm not only documenting this for my own personal sake, not only for the sake of RLD uh, TV, you know, because name of the channel and RLD Inc. Not only for y'all, but also the investors, also for future investors that want to see, hey, have you ever done this? Now I can send it to the channel and show, yeah, we have we have actual documentation, we have records on file that show that we we closed on this, that we that we done this. You see what I'm saying? You got you got to have a vision, you got to have a plan, you got to have things things laid out. You know, you want people to trust in you, especially if you're doing the right thing. And even when people are doing the wrong thing, they still build some type of trust. But I, I'm here to help. I'm here to, to show you these different things. And I want you to apply it, rather it's real estate or it's life in general. And then she says, everything looks good. I go ahead and submit it for our signatures. Looks good. The address is wrong on the contract, though. It says 136 instead of 126. Oh, no, let me get her to fix that thank you and then um she says good morning vna it sounds like your seller is pretty sophisticated but the lender just informed me regarding the railing on the porch the gap in between the balusters under the railing cannot be wider than six inches the appraiser the appraiser will measure i, I kind of like already knew that because if you go to the front of the house and you see those uh, those rails I built those from scratch and I knew that you couldn't have so much of a gap in between it for safety because a child could stick their head in there and get stuck or they could slip through there. Obviously it has happened before. So I kind of already knew that, but I wanted to clarify what was going on because I thought she was talking about the front, but you know, I want to make sure. And I said in, reg in regards to the back railings, correct? I want to make sure she wasn't talking about the front. I'm like, well, the front is, is good to go. Um, you know, I built those myself. You know, you may be thinking, well, why don't, why don't you, if you can build, if you can do stuff like that from scratch and build stuff like that yourself, then why you don't do it? Well, if you've seen that back, you understand why. I ain't, no, nah, no. Nah. We're going to let the professionals handle that. I ain't trying to slip and fall or even take that risk. It's, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. My value is 
is worth more than trying to save a few dollars. I mean, that's just me. Maybe you, you, you're different. You get up there and you can do it or whatever. Or you be like, you know, hey, I just want to do it for a reason. Not me. Certain things I do. Other things, hey, we're going to let the professionals pay for all that. And then she says, yes, sir. Okay, no problem. Have they discussed when they would like to make the deposit? Asking so I can let the contractor for the back know and get it done ASAP. Like I told you, I'm still learning the process. I'm like, okay. We got the inspection report. They signed, they signed the papers. What's up? <laughs> and then she tells me, I'm picking it up tomorrow. Happy face. Because that means that it's getting closer and closer to closing. And boom. They're happy with the inspection report. They're happy with the house. Here goes $1,000. That's, mind you, is non-refundable. Now, why is that important? Because if they, at any point in time after this, Decide that we don't want to go through with the deal. I still keep that thousand dollars and that thousand dollars is going into the property, which in this case is the back deck. Let's say the deal falls through. They don't want the house for whatever reason or they can't do it anymore. Right. I got a brand new deck out of it. So what do we do? We put the property back on the market and guess what? You're coming into. Well, we're in February now. But you February, you know, ends and you get you start to get out of winter and you start to come into spring. Spring is when the real estate market is heating up. That's when a lot of people are buying houses more so than in the winter. Now you have somebody coming in and they want the house and we don't have to go through the whole process again of the back deck area not being done, which speeds up the process even more. And guess what? Because the back deck is done and this person, we under, we're saying that they back out of the deal. Since this person back out of the deal and they were buying it at $100,000 because we have the back deck done, guess what? We're not relisting it at $100,000. We're listing it at one fifteen or one ten. You see what I'm saying? And then you're coming into the spring, which we know the property is going to move fast. And even at that price point, it's still a good deal. Just want to, you know, give y'all some insight on that. You know, uh, a lot of people, they talk about real estate, but they don't go into details like this. Or maybe they do. A lot of them that I've seen, they don't. I'm different. I don't mind sharing this with you. But um, it goes on and she says, and I will drop it off to you. And I told her uh, something about the sign in the yard, the street division had picked it up and everything. You can pause it and read. I'm not going to read that. But uh, I had to go. I had to go pick the sign up because the city, they came by and it wasn't like five feet away from the right of way. And they came and got it. And then we had to go back and get it and then move it. And then she says, uh, I didn't know that. Um, appreciate that. No problem. And then I have some questions on a questionnaire. We had the act, um, not acts, but answer with the title company about the termite inspection. We haven't done this yet. So that's going to be completely new to me. Uh, hopefully everything comes back. Okay. If not, then we will handle it from there. It is an older house. You have newer houses that have termites in them. Everything. That's just the nature of, of the game, as we say. Um, but um, the house is solid. And like I just said, the inspector, they went on there and they inspected all that and they passed it. And like I told you again, this is FHA. It's dealing with the government, so they have to do it. They can't cut corners because it's going to affect their business. I prepared myself. You need to get this house sprayed for termites. So we need to do it. We need to do that. I prepared myself for that. But something major is going to make the deal fall through. I don't see that happening because of everything else that's happened so far and me knowing the condition of the house and me knowing that we did repair some bad wood that was that was under there uh like in the, in the kitchen area where the um the floor was uh had some uh, old old wood and everything we, we took all that out but i'm prepared though i want to say it one more time i just want to want to be open and honest about it 
Then I said, on this questionnaire, what am I supposed to put on this? I think the contract did state something about it, but I could be mistaken. There will be one. They will want the letter of clearance from Termite Company, but the title company orders that. So that's you know, that's not something I do. I can't call in my own Termite people if I had somebody and say, hey, I need you to pass this because I know that it ain't going to pass. They're going to send in their own people. They're going to do it saying it's good to go. If it's not good to go, this is what needs to be fixed. And then we go from there. We haven't done that yet. So I don't know. We're still waiting to get the deck done. We can't get the, the deck and the stairs done until this weather clears up. And then they, you know, ask some questions like the company name. Like, okay, I don't know all that. And then uh, I said, okay, when I select yes, it requires me to put what termite company. She said, just put it to be determined. Thanks. And I say, I pay for the termite inspection. And she said, yes, it's usually the seller's cost at closing. Meaning it comes out the check. <laughs> okay. And then she said, I will be back in town tomorrow. What time would be good? What time would be a good time to meet you to drop off your check? Whatever time is good for you. Set time and I can be available. Well, 1030 work for you. Perfect. And then that's where we are at on that that's going to catch you up with everything that has transpired so when i drop the next video where we have the the contract that i'm using walking through the property and stuff like that well you know looking at the back area and then we walk to the property it'll make sense and then we'll um make some future videos talking about the the termite inspection how that went you know and, and whatever else and hopefully we get to the closing which is supposed to be on february 28th oh yeah the appraisal we'll let you see what the property appraised for um we'll take you through the closing process this will be my this will be my first time doing that i probably won't be able to bring my phone in there i don't know to record it we'll show you the check We'll show you our profits and we'll be going on to the next, the next property. But with that being said, y'all have a blessed one.